but I don't expect silver to decline much longer from here. And the stock will, of course, follow silver as it always has and always will and always does. And as always, there's a lot going on this week, though it might not seem like it because we just had another smash down in the silver price because we had a whole huge beat in payrolls or something. Uh, ADP payrolls, I think it was. And everyone was like, wow, look at all the jobs. But there is an explanation for this. And the explanation is that money that was printed way back in 2020 is flooding back into the system, which is not going to be very good for inflation statistics as they calculate it, meaning consumer prices. We are rapidly approaching the moment where we have rising, rapidly rising interest rates and rapidly rising consumer prices, because though the Keynesians don't want to admit it, raising interest rates over the medium to long term raises prices because it kills supply faster than it kills demand if you hold interest rates high for long enough, which is where we are at now. And though it might not seem like it, both gold and silver are in very good technical positions, and I'll explain why as we get through the slides. And the United Kingdom, the UK, as we lovingly call it, looks to be on the verge of some kind of major crisis because its bond yields, its gilt yields, to put it technically, are spiraling out of control. And this is why I believe that the UK will be the first Western developed country to experience hyperinflation in its domestic currency. Moving average, which is at 328, we are at 320, just below it. If we can bounce off of this line as support, it would be a good sign. We might marginally break it. We already have marginally broken it, but I don't expect silver to decline much longer from here. And the stock will, of course, follow silver as it always has and always will and always does. And the reason I don't expect silver to decline much longer or at all is that open interest has reached a 10-year low at about 115,000 contracts, and that will not get much lower. It means that all the shorts have covered and all the longs are out, and they have given up, they have capitulated. Now there's only one way for the metal to move, and that is up. Could there be another ephemeral smash? Yes, as we saw on the ADP payrolls report on Thursday as I'm recording this, but it's not going to last long. Silver is headed higher lot sooner than you think. And we can move on with this week's silver report. So let's start out with the technical picture. It might not seem so bullish. We're all frustrated. We're in another downturn. It seems annoying. Why is it happening if the money is falling apart and the world seems to be coming apart at the seams, wherever the seams of the world are, I don't know, but it doesn't look good for humanity at this point. And we need money to take center stage in order to bring people back into balance because it is the money that is ruining everything. It is the poisoned money that is ruining society as it always has in the collapse of empires. But once money returns, we will return to sanity. It is not over for humanity and the WEF is not going to take over. Don't worry about that. So the technical picture, I want to start with gold here. What we're seeing actually is we have a support zone forming, a support zone forming at the old high of 1923. That was the high in 2011 before there was a silver movement, before there was silver screws, before Chris Marcus or me even existed in the silver world, or I don't know if he did, or we had any consciousness of what was going on. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe Chris was more awake than I was 10, 12 years ago. But he can answer those questions for you. Anyway, what we're seeing here, 1923 here, you see that little red circle. That's the 2011, September 2011 high, when most of us were just waking up to what was going on. And we have tried to break that high. Uh, we've come above it four times, but we've never consistently traded above that high of 923. It's only been a few months at most that we traded above it. Here's one, here's two, here's three. There was just a few weeks and here's four. And each time we broke back below. But at this point, it looks like 1920s, 1910s is serving as support. It has never served as long-term support before. My point is that if 1923, if the old 2011 high is now support, we are headed a lot higher on the next rally, which I believe will head well above $2,100 in gold, and silver should start to catch up as monetary panic takes hold, as interest rates rise and consumer prices rise, both at the same time, and everyone starts to understand that central banks are bleeped. Moving to the technical picture in silver, 
it is stronger than it might seem emotionally here. If we look at the blue line and the red line, which is the 50 and 200 week moving averages, respectively, the 50 week moving average is at $22.13. The 200 week moving average is almost the same at $22.24. And we are currently just below $23.40, wherever that is. I think we're a little bit low today because of silver smash on the ADP report, uh, the payrolls report which came out higher than anyone expected because nobody expects anything that makes any sense anymore. But uh, we see here that this is a pretty strong technical position because look here, when we had this really crazy overrun, the 2011 high at $50, that was a bit too high too fast. And we declined back here and we could not take the 50 week, 50 week moving average. We couldn't go above it. And we went above it briefly, but we stopped the 200 week moving average over here in 2016. And we just kept staying below these lines until, uh, you know, the 2020 uh, crazy printing, all the incentive that happened in 2020. And then we were above, we fell below it again. And now we're coming at it from support. Hopefully these lines will not break this time. And if they break, it'll only be marginally and very temporary. But I think just like gold is finding support in 1923, I think finally silver is finding long-term support at the 50 week and 200 week moving averages simultaneously. And that should get a lot of algorithms trading with silver as it won't break these lines. Maybe it will marginally for a little bit. I can't say for sure, but it's looking good on a long-term perspective. So what's going on in potential financial crisis land? Well, we have two possible culprits for a trigger of the next global financial crisis. One of them is in commercial mortgage-backed securities, and the other, I think, is in the United Kingdom. We can go through these one at a time. The uh, commercial mortgage-backed security situation, CMBS has been declining precipitously since uh, the lockdown era when people decided they were just going to work at home and not go back to their offices because if you're going to lock them out of their offices, they're not going to come back to it. There's another you know, thing that they never thought of, geniuses. Uh, but anyway, we have here the beginning of 2023 when delinquency rates were about 1.6, 1.7%. They are now about 4.6%. This is the biggest six-month spike in delinquency rates in commercial mortgage-backed security, uh, mortgage-backed securities ever, including the decline from uh, mid-2008 until 2012, it looks like, when delinquency rates moved from close to zero to over 10%, about 